Justin here with another Roll20 tutorial. In this video, we'll be talking at length about the card deck feature. While this feature was originally designed to be used for card games, you can utilize decks for other game items too, such as board game components, bean counters, poker chips, or even status ailment markers. I've even seen one Roll20 user create a card deck for their player's character sheets. You can have several very unconventional decks hanging out on your tabletop. If your decks are set to infinite, you'll never have to worry about running out of components or losing game pieces under the couch ever again. Every Roll20 campaign comes with a standard deck of 54 playing cards, but you can create and add as many decks as you like. To place a deck on the tabletop, first go to the Decks and Tables tab located on the sidebar, and then click on the Show button next to the desired deck. When you mouse over a deck that's on the tabletop, a menu becomes visible that lists several basic actions. Deal, Recall, Shuffle, and Hide. Clicking on Deal brings up a new window that will ask you how many cards you would like to deal. There's also a drop-down option to select who you want to deal cards to. There's the universal option to deal to all players, but you can also target specific players in your game, too. The recall action returns cards back to the deck. When you click on this, it gives you an inventory of where all the cards are currently in the campaign. There's a count of cards that are in the player's hands, those laid out on the tabletop, those left unplayed in the deck, and the total of all cards in the deck. You can recall from individual locations, or you can recall everything at once by clicking on the Recall All button at the bottom of the window. Check off the Shuffle After Recalling option to auto-shuffle the restocked deck. Shuffle is pretty straightforward. Clicking on the Shuffle option will bring up a confirmation window that asks for permission to shuffle the deck. This will also add any return cards back into the deck. Hide will remove the deck from the tabletop. You can bring the deck back out at any time by going back to the Decks and Tables tab on the sidebar and clicking on the Show button again. Clicking on the card that pops up out of the deck will draw the first card and flip it over. The flipped card can then be dragged to the tabletop, or you can move that card into a player's hand. To deal a card without revealing the card face, just click and drag from the deck over to the player's avatar icon. To view your hand, click on the mini card icon that appears over your avatar after dealt one or more cards. You can resort the order of the cards by dragging them around. If you're using more than one deck at once, you can swap cards between hands or consolidate all your cards into one big hand. Clicking on a card here, or one that's been flipped over atop the deck, will display the full size image of the card on your screen. Click the mini card icon again to hide your hand. You can play a card by dragging one from either the deck or in your hand to the tabletop. Once on the tabletop, you'll be able to move, resize, and rotate it. If you wish to play the card face down, drag while holding down the shift key. You can also flip a card while it's on the tabletop by right-clicking on it and selecting Flip Card from the pop-up options menu. The Take Card option from this pop-up menu will pick the card up from the tabletop and place it into your hand. To discard cards, you will first need to drag the card to the tabletop, select it, and hit the delete key. Cards that are returned in this fashion will be added to the deck again once the deck is reshuffled. To steal a player's card, first you need to open up their hand by clicking on the mini card icon and tap the card or cards you wish to steal. The player whose cards are being stolen will be asked to confirm the move before the cards are swapped hands. To trade a card to another player, merely drag the card from your hand to a player's avatar image. This will bring up a window where the player can either accept the trade as is, or offer cards in exchange. Some role-playing games like Savage Worlds use playing cards to settle an encounter's initiative order. There's two ways to add cards to the Turn Order feature. The first method is to add all your PC and NPC tokens to the Turn Order per usual. Then you flip a card over on the deck for each character in turn and drag the card face up to a token's number slot in the turn order. 
The second method is to turn a card into a token. When a card is placed on the tabletop, it is treated like a drawing rather than a token. Right click on the card to bring up the options pop-up menu, click on advanced, and toggle off is drawing. Now the card will receive the same properties that tokens normally get. Now you have access to add turn on the options menu to place the card into the turn order. It's important to note that when a card is converted to a token, it loses the ability to be flipped over. Editing decks and creating new ones utilize the same editor. You can even edit the default set of playing cards that come with every Roll20 campaign if you wish. Just note that if you change the default deck, there's presently no way to revert it back to its original state. In order to get it back, you'd have to create a brand new campaign. To edit the deck, click on its name under the Decks and Tables tab on the sidebar. This brings up the Edit Deck window. Each card in a deck is filed in a single column list. If I click on any card in the list, a new window appears where I can change the name of the card, replace the image of the card face, or delete the card entirely. Underneath the list is the image used for the back of the card. Important note if you're creating or editing your own decks, use the same image dimensions for both the front and back of the card. Otherwise, the cards will scale in unexpected ways during play. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to recreate this 8-card trader deck. It will be comprised of 5 duplicates of one card and 3 of another. To create a new deck, just click on the Add button to the right of the Deck section in the Decks and Tables tab. By default, the new deck will be named New Deck and have no cards attributed to it. I'm going to click on the untitled deck to bring up its edit window. First thing I'm going to do is name the deck something specific. Next, there's a couple of toggle settings you can set your deck up with. Show Deck to Players and Players Can Draw Cards will mean that when you, as the GM, place the deck on the tabletop, your players will be able to see and interact with the cards. Toggle these off if you would like to use a deck privately. Cards in Deck Are Infinite is an option you'll find handy if you're using decks that contain one or maybe two repeating items, like board game components or bean counters. The toggles for viewing other people's hands work in this fashion. If number of cards is toggled on, then you will see the number of cards listed with the mini card icon over the player's avatar image, and more importantly, you'll be able to open and view their hand. If front of cards is checked, then you will be able to see what kind of cards the other player is holding when you are looking at their hand. Next, I'll add the back card graphic. You can import images via a file search from your computer, or if you have already imported the images, you can drag them from the art library search and into the image window. Now I will fill out my deck one card at a time by clicking the Add Card button, where I'll name the card and add the face art. When you have all your cards added in the deck, remember to save your changes and your deck is now ready for play. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Check out our YouTube channel for more Roll20 tutorials, and as always, you can read our help documentation over at help.roll20.net. If you have any further questions on how to use our virtual tabletop, visit the official Roll20 forums. Happy gaming!